spine right here. Okay, this is square. If you look at his club face, his club face is actually pointing more down. If you take flexion of the hand, so this motion right here, and you flex it down, it actually closes the club face. Your face looks like this, the face is pointing to the sky. That means you're rolling it open. We're gonna talk about Victor Hovland's swing and how we can apply it to your game and understanding how consistent his golf swing is and how you can apply some of those consistency factors so that you can play better golf. So let's take a look at his golf swing here. So it has a great setup. But a couple things I want to point out first. Number one is takeaway. He has it very closed. It's it's almost square, but it's it's definitely closed on the backswing. So if you take a look at his spine right here, okay, this is square, right? So if you get square right here, just like this, if you look at his club face, his club face is actually pointing more down. So if it was actually matching this line, then that would actually be square on the backswing. So he actually has it closed. So the reason why that's good because on his backswing, he's not doing anything unnecessary to open the club face to where he has to do any timing on the downswing. So he's already got it closed on the backswing. So then he goes to the top and then he has this iconic, you're seeing a lot more of flexion at the top. So if you look at his wrist right here at the top, right? He's in that, he's in flexion. Now flexion actually closes the club face. And so we're gonna talk about that here in a second, but that's another thing he does to close the club face. You might be thinking, okay, is he gonna hook, like, does he play a draw? Is he, is he gonna hook it? He actually plays a fade, but he's not worried about the ball going left or even going way too far right because he has two positions in his backswing already that's square to closed. So that means if he has all these closed positions, that what he's going to have to do on the downswing is he's going to have to rotate. So if you watch him when he comes down, he shallows that club really nice, gets on his right forearm right here. We usually want the shaft between here and there, and it's beautifully in the middle. And then he rotates through and he gets a low exit. So low exit, when you see the club exit really low on the body like that, that means he rotates really well through the golf swing. The more you rotate your chest through and past impact, typically the lower the exit. And so he's had to learn that, or he likes to rotate, but he's had to learn to close the club face because the more you rotate, the more the face wants to be open. And so his matchup is to have a backswing that has a closed club face on the takeaway and close to the top because he knows he likes to rotate really hard coming through because rotation past impact tends to leave the face open. So he's created a golf swing where all he has to do is rotate his body through impact, right? And you can see his hips are turning a lot here and his chest is turning. He gets a lot of rotation. This is definitely a more younger player swing this is hard to mimic for most amateur golfers because most amateurs don't have the mobility in their wrists don't have the mobility in their hips and their ability to rotate so there's not much you can take away as far as the rotation if you can't rotate a lot if you have the ability to rotate a lot then this might be a great swing for you but if you don't have the ability to rotate a lot then this may not be a great thing for you let's discuss let's talk about these wrist angles and let's talk about how you could apply some of the things that Victor Hovland does to your golf game. When we start talking about wrist angles, let's talk about what flexion does. So if you take flexion of the hand, so this motion right here, and you flex it down, it actually closes the club face. I want you to understand that motion of the lead hand. If you go into extension, it actually opens the club face. And don't think of flexion or extension like as good or bad. There are a lot of good players in extension. I just want you to understand what it does and how you could change these positions to make different matchups depending on if you're slicing the ball or hooking the ball, okay? So when we talk about flexion at the top of the swing, we'll talk about that and then we'll come back to the takeaway. If I go to the top of the swing and go into more flexion, that's actually gonna close the club face because you see when I come down, you can see that face is pointing more down. If I go into extension, you can see it's open. So if on your downswing, you have a lot of extension, you're gonna to have to do something around impact to square the face up. And it's usually a forearm roll, which a forearm roll is, it's a way to do it, but it's a hard way to time. So if you're having to roll your hands like this really hard, you know, that's just gonna be really hard. Cause like if I hold it right here and I open the face on the, bound, on the backswing and on the downswing, I try to roll it closed. If I don't time that perfectly, Every single time I can miss it left, I can miss it right. Because the way you're impacting the ball is a throwing release motion, which works, it can work, but it takes more timing. 
And for most amateur golfers, we want to take out as much of that timing as possible. There are some players on tour that have more forearm roll. Roy McIlroy has a little bit more forearm roll than most. Okay, so I'm not saying you can't do it, but I would say for the average amateur, having the time, the rolling pattern is probably not the best bet. So if you look at like what Victor Hovland's done, he doesn't have hardly any forearm rotation at all through impact because if he did, he would hook the golf ball. Okay, so if you are a slicer of the golf ball, then I think it's really good for you to get into a flatter wrist or if you can go into some flexion. You don't have to go into as much flexion as Victor Hovland, but if you notice you have a bunch of cupping or bowing in this wrist like this, cupping at the top, then you know the face is open. You would have to do something on the downswing, but it's hard to move the wrist a long ways on the downswing. So it's better just to go ahead and get to the top and have that wrist flatter. You know, what you can do is you can take a credit card. I don't have my glove on right now, but you can take a credit card put this card in your glove and you're going to see that if I go into extension, see if you can see that here. If I go into extension, that card's going to come up. If I go into flexion, you'll see there's a gap right there. Okay. So we want to go into flexion and, and, and try, or try to get this card as flat as we can and, and get it just like this, instead of being extremely cupped at the top of the golf swing. So, I would say if you're a slicer, definitely do that. Now, if you tend to hook the golf ball, I don't think you necessarily need to go into ex more extension. Okay, most, I would say probably 90% of golfers that hook the golf ball, it's not because they're in too much flexion at the top or their wrist is too flat. It has to do with their release pattern. They're over rolling it. Maybe their grip's too strong, but I don't know that I've ever had a lesson where the main, maybe one, but the main reason why they're hooking it is because they're in too much flexion. You don't typically see that, right? So I wouldn't suggest going into extension to fix a hook. You can, but I wouldn't suggest it. Just because I would rather change the way you release it than change your wrist angle. Because I usually, I typically like a flatter wrist or maybe a little bit of flexion because I know that keeps it more closed and it makes us have to rotate more, which is a more stable way of, of making a motion through the golf ball. All right, so now let's talk about the takeaway and then how you can create a good matchup on your takeaway like Victor Hovland. So like what you saw in Victor Hovland is that when he takes the club back, his face is actually pointing more down than his spine. So here's my spine right here. Okay. His face is pointing more down. So he's got it closed. So if you're a player that slices the golf ball and your face looks like this, the face is pointing to the sky. That means you're rolling it open. Okay. There are some players on tour that have done that, but again, for the average amateur, let's make the golf swing as simple as possible and let's get the face more square. At least the leading edge of your club should be matching your spine. If you're a big slice for the golf ball, it might be good for you to get that face a little bit more closed. And how you do that is you, you can either keep your arms more stacked on top of each other. So instead of rolling them this way, you keep them more stacked. So as I take the club back, it's stacked like this or you go into a little bit of flexion with this hand. So as you go into flexion, so if I flex, you can see that face roll down just a little bit. I typically like just to keep my arms more stacked in my opinion, but I have seen some people use flexion. Now, if you tend to hook the ball a lot, then I, I wouldn't suggest going, getting the face more down. And I wouldn't necessarily, I would definitely wouldn't suggest opening it on the backswing, okay? What I would do is if just double check and make sure this line on the club is matching your spine on the takeaway, okay? Just make sure the toe's not way up or the face isn't way down. Now, if you're taking the club back and the face is pointed way down like this, then it might benefit you to get the face matching more your spine. Now, let's transition into the rotation, and I think which is the main driver of what makes Victor Hovland so consistent. He's developed those two positions, which I think has allowed him to have a swing where he can rotate his body really hard. One thing he does so well is his hips clear and his chest turns and you'll see this exit really low down here like this, okay? That means he's rotating a lot. So he has to have a lot of hip mobility and a, lot, and a, and a big ability to be able to rotate through. Again, when he goes back, he's in flexion and then he rotates his hips, rotates his chest, he gets that club on plane and then he gets through the ball. Now, if you can't rotate that much, then 
I wouldn't suggest going into a lot of flexion like that because you're not going to be able to keep the club face square. Because if you notice, the longer I rotate, the longer that face wants to stay open. You can see the face pointing that way. So what he's done is he's gone into flexion, which helps square that club face up. I think that's important. He's done those things so that he can rotate as hard as he can, and he's really not worried about missing it right. He's also learned to not let his forearms roll over each other. So when he comes through the ball, he's here, he rotate, rotate, rotates, and then his forearms stay square. They don't roll over through the backs, through the, through the, through the follow through and through impact. So that way he doesn't, he's literally keeping his club face square as long as possible. Probably one of the golfers on tour that keeps his club face square longer than anybody else. Maybe Matt Wolf. Matt Wolf does the same thing too. He keeps his club face square a really long time. But I think that's why Victor Hovland's going to be consistent for a long time is because he doesn't move the club face. So if you can get anything out of today's live lesson here and what you can learn from Victor Hovland is we need to create a golf swing that controls the club face because club face is king. And if you can't control the club face, it doesn't matter. Because remember this phrase, on an iron, and this, is, this, this number fluctuates a little bit, but on an iron typically, 75% of where the ball takes off the face. So when I make contact where this ball takes off the face, 75% is, is controlled by where the face is aimed at impact. So path, and I don't care if you swing over the top or way in out, your club face has 75% of the control of where that ball started. So if we don't have control over this face and it's open one time, close the next time, and you keep overcorrecting, it goes back and forth, you're playing army golf, left, right, left, right, then you're going to struggle to score and hit greens. So take it from Victor Hovland and look at your takeaway. See if the club face is square. Take a look at the top, look at your wrist angles. If you're a big slicer, let's get that wrist definitely a lot flatter. Or maybe if you can, try to get into a little bit of flexion. I don't think you have to, okay? Now we didn't talk about grip. Grip could be another factor in, into this, but take a look at those two things and then understand, can you rotate through the ball? If you can't rotate as much through the ball, I wouldn't suggest going into a bunch of flexion. Okay. If you, like I said, if you're, if you hook the ball really bad and you're, and you want to get this flat wrist and you want to rotate hard, just make sure when you get through, you don't let your forearms, let me switch this way, roll over. You feel like the face stays square to the target as long as possible.